Greetings, Earthlings. Uh, Joel Earth Tools here. And we're going to shoot a little new setup video for the Resha Giuliano brand single stage snow blowers that we offer to fit our walk behind tractors. In the video here, we've also got a BCS 853 that we're just going to hook it up to, but we're not going to talk much about the 853. This is about the snow blower. So, if you've received one of these from us, uh, whether it's to be to fit a BCS or a Grillo, two things are going to come disassembled. One is the chute that goes on the top of the snow blower. So this will be in the box of the snow blower, just wrapped up in bubble wrap. So you'll have to mount that. Uh, the other thing that'll be separate is the long arm that connects to the chute and is going to clamp onto the handlebars of the tractor. This is the arm that twists the chute around to direct the snow to the right or left. Uh, if you've ordered the snow blower from us, hello Carl, Carl's going to help in the video. Um, if you've ordered the snow blower as a single unit from us without being, you know, without ordering at the same time as a tractor or other implements, this will probably come in a long narrow box as a separate piece from the snow blower itself. As the snow blower will come in a box strapped to a pallet, but this will be a separate loose carton that the truck driver should deliver to you as well. If you've ordered the snow blower as part of a tractor package, this thing could be packaged with some other pallet uh, if it's long enough to fit on there or if it's short enough to fit on a pallet. So anyway, we'll get to mounting that in a minute. But we're getting the chute mounted. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to remove this rear bolt, or nut rather. Take off this washer. We're going to slip the chute on here. Now there's some usually some grease on the bottom of this and some grease on the base of this thing. If you don't think there's quite enough grease, you can always put a little more grease on. I have a little cup over here with some grease in it. Put that on there just like so without getting my hands all nasty. So I'll slip this in under these two front washers like so. Put this rear washer on. Position this. Okay. The studs are welded in on the bottom so you don't need to use a wrench on the bottom. But you can go ahead and bring these all the way down. That is, you can get them fully tight. These, these washers are made so that even when they're tight, it doesn't pinch down on the chute, so it still allows it to rotate. So then when you've got it mounted, go ahead and tighten all three of them down to keep it from rattling around. All right, there we go. Everything's tight. <clears throat> now, You've got an owner's manual package with this thing. It's usually clamped somewhere around the rear here. They put a little zip tie on it to hold it in place. And it's sometimes pinched under this little cover as well. This cover is something that you're going to be taking open occasionally. There's a little rubber strap here and this thing opens up. This is your shear bolt right here. So if you've got a rock or a, you know, the Chicago Tribune or whatever stuck in this thing because it was buried under the snow, Instead of destroying gears or bearings or anything in the tractor, you're going to break a shear bolt. Uh, the shear bolt is located right here. It's a bolt and passes through the shaft with a nut on the other side. And in with the owner's manual, you're going to find a couple spare shear bolts. So there they are, bolts and nuts. These ones just aren't painted like those are. But this is a standard six millimeter bolt and nut. You can buy at any hardware store, so it's not some special thing you have to get from us. They put two grades in here. They've got an 8.8 .8 and a 4.8, the 4.8 being softer. Uh, they've got the 8.8 .8 in there now. 4.8 is, is going to break really easily, and usually you won't want to use that. Um, I guess if you're just super sensitive about not you know, dinging up your augers, you could use the 4.8, but typically when that breaks, I would look, you know, use this 8.8 .8 and look for another 8.8 .8 at your local hardware store. They're easy to get. I think it's a maybe a 50 millimeter long bolt uh, and lock nut to put on the end. Also, occasionally you want to grease this because the thing, there's a grease fitting here where you can shoot some grease into this thing to grease the inside of this sleeve because once the, the drive shaft is putting power through this thing and if the shear bolt shears, it, it breaks that shear bolt in half, then this part will spin without spinning this and there, should, there could be friction between the two parts. So this will be spinning at a thousand RPMs and this one's not going at all. So if there was no grease present in there, it would kind of overheat the metal and gall it. 
So at least once a year, go ahead and give that a grease, uh, a pump with a grease gun. Um, there's usually some grease in there at the factory. Uh, I don't have a grease gun right here now, but I'm gonna give this a shot before we ship this out, just to make sure. There's also grease fitting here for the chain drive assembly on the side. This is also hidden. Well, no, actually you can get to it with the cover closed, so that's nice. Because the uh, on the side of this snowblower, there's a double chain assembly that transfers the power from this, sh this shaft up to the auger shaft. Um, the nice thing about the Resha Giuliano blowers is that because of the side-driven nature of them, there's nothing in the center here. I'll turn this down. There's nothing in the center except the four paddles that actually throw the snow. There's no gearbox in the center. And the gearbox being in the center on a lot of snow blowers is what gives you your biggest tendency to jam objects. That is, if the auger picks up a rock, it gets it stuck against that center gearbox housing. Well, there's just nothing there because it's driven from the side on this thing. So it can literally throw a rock about the size of a tennis ball. You can pick it up through, you know, with one of these paddles and just chuck it right in the chute. So there's much lower chance of clogs with the rest of Giuliano design. Um, but because this chain is transferring power and gets hot, they want a little lubricant to it occasionally, so they put a grease fitting in here. And they've got a little sticker here uh, of what type of grease to use, which is just a standard multi-purpose grease. And you pump it in there about every 10 hours of use. Just give it, you know, five or 10 shots. So not a lot of maintenance required there. There is also gear oil in this gearbox. You should check that once a year. There's a little fill plug on the top. Just take out the fill plug, stick a screwdriver down in there, and you know make sure it's roughly half full with 90 weight gear oil. Nothing special there either. Um, let's see. So what other maintenance? I think that those are all of our lubrication points. Swing this out of the way and get this thing shut. So there are also skids on the bottom. Let me show you how we're rocking this thing up like this. So you've got skids that, you know, where the snowblower can slide along the ground. These skids can be adjusted by loosening these two nuts, or rather two bolts on either one, and, uh, and then just sliding the skid into the position you want it. Now the way they've got these little skid carriers set up with kind of a channel, uh, kind of a lip rolled over on the bottom, you actually don't need to have both bolts in here. That is, if you are using a, this blower on a tractor that has really tall wheels on it, and you need this skid to come out a little further than what the two bolts will allow, as you can see, they would, they would run out of adjustment right here in the slot. These, slides, these bolts will slide forward to here. Well, you can take out this bolt and continue sliding this thing out and when you lock it down, even just the one bolt will hold it in position because of the way it's, the skid is tucked into the bottom of this angle iron here. So it, can't, it still can't swivel. So one bolt's sufficient. So like I say, if you need that extra adjustment, go ahead and use it. The idea of the skids is this so that you're, if, you, if you're using this thing on a gravel driveway, you want to adjust the skids down to hold this mouth off the ground a little bit so you don't scoop up all your gravel and blow it out the blower. Because, you know, suddenly you lose all your gravel and there's more of a chance, I mean the more gravel you've got going through the thing, the more a chance is that you can actually get a clog and uh, shear a shear bolt. So those skids are nice to be able to adjust to do that. Uh, there's an extra reinforcement plate welded on there. This is a very heavy steel housing. I mean these things are built like a tank and the uh, actual sh uh, scoop on the bottom there is replaceable as well if you're going to wear that out. So, Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and plug this thing in, get our quick hitch oriented properly. A little wiggling there, let down the latch. You can see the pin did not drop fully, but I'm just going to wiggle the snowblower a little bit and it should get all the way down. There we go. You're good. Okay, next thing we're going to do is mount our crank rod. Take loose this bolt. A couple of bolts holding this thing on there. Loosen that one up, and I think I'll take this one completely 
jaw. Obviously, if you have an air tool or electric impact gun, this goes a little faster, but I didn't take the time to grab one of those, and that's cheating anyway, right? Because not everybody has one of those things. So this thing has threads at the end. Now some of these rods come with this little clevis at the end of them already. Uh, in that case, this clevis, here, let me take it apart here. Let me just think about So this clevis has this little thing that pops on here and then the pin slides out. So sometimes this is already on here. Sometimes the snowblower company ships it on here. Just whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but if I like to do it this way, because if you try to if you try to get this thing lined up and screw this in with this clevis on here already, it's kind of awkward. It's much easier to take the clevis off here and go ahead and thread it on here. Just bring it all the way on. Doesn't need to be super tight or anything. Just get it hand tight, okay? And then go ahead and put this thing back on here. This is gonna slide through here, and then we'll push down. So, so the action here is a push and a pull to sh slide this chute around to the appropriate position. So it brings it around all the way to that side and brings it all the way back. And then we want to orient this in some location that's going to work for us in all those positions. So let's see, we're going to get more of the way of the cables here. No, that should be about right. Now, if there's a blue plastic shroud that goes over the center portion of the handlebars on both the BCS and Grillo tractors, sometimes with this with this snowblower chute mounted, you just have to leave that thing off because this this clamp sort of gets in the way of it. So it's not a big deal. That that uh, plastic shield is nothing but cosmetic anyway. It doesn't help the function of the tractor at all. separately. That is, the handlebars are always on a little bit of an angle usually, so wherever the factory has happened to tighten down this eye, it doesn't really matter because you can loosen up this nut and you can orient this thing so it's 90 degrees with the travel of the rod and then just lock it down in place so that it doesn't move. Uh, it might be helpful to use a second wrench to hold it right down here. I just don't have one with me right now. So get that good enough. Okay. So now, the way this thing works, there is, there are, it's like a keyhole shaped hole in this carrier washer right here. And the keyhole lines up with, right now the keyhole is up. So there's, it's a round hole, but it's got a little protrusion at the top. And there's these, these rods that are sort of welded on here and they have breaks between them at about one inch increments. So what you're able to do is slide this through and then lock it in place by turning it. So look, see it's stuck in place now. Now if I want to unlock it, I can turn it back to where the keyhole will slide, bring it to the next position, and then once you've got it at a, at a, you know, at a break, you can lock it in place. So it's a very fast shoot adjustment. Now what you want to do is you want to be able to have the full operational range of that thing available. That is, you want to be able to get it all the way to the left and as far as right as it'll go. Well, 
depending on where you put this clamp, that's going to affect it somewhat. But also, they thought of this, this entire piece with these, with these little rods on there, it loosens up and can slide. There's an Allen bolt at the top that allows you to loosen that. I'm going to grab an Allen wrench real quick. This is a four millimeter Allen wrench. So basically we're going to set this thing up to where I, I've got as much range as I can have. So right now you can see it's not going all the way to the left because I'm bottoming out right here. So that's no good. So we're going to loosen this thing up. I want that thing to go all the way to the left. So that's my furthest left position. And I'm sliding this thing so it'll lock into place right here. I can rotate it around. So right there. So that locks it in the full left position. And that's the full right position right there. And yeah, right there it locks. So basically if you set it all the way one way, it'll automatically set itself so it should you know, do the other way as well. A little paint up there, but you can see how quick that adjustment is. Now, the adjustment on the end of the chute, the deflector, we call it, it's adjusted just by loosening this knob. You can crank this thing up or down. Again, it's got too much paint on it. So if uh, you can crank it back like that, so it'll have more loft on the snow, but if you need to deflect the snow down somewhat to keep it from hitting a power line or whatever, you can just put this down in whatever position you want and lock it into place with this thumb screw here. So that's about it. There's also a guard which comes in the box with the snow blower. This is just a safety thing. Some people don't put these on, but it's a nice idea to do it because it keeps small children from running in here quite as fast. So you take out these two little bolts right here on each side which come installed in the snowblower, bolt this guard on and you know just put the bolts, bolts back in. So it's uh, just a, a knee catcher there, you know, smack your machine and walk up the front of the thing. But those safety things are important, so I want to put that on. And as far as greasing this as it needs it, I mean if this slides as you slide this thing back and forth for months and months, if it gets a little stiff, well, you can just take some good spray grease or penetrating oil and spray around this to keep it lubricated. You don't want it to get all rusty for sure. Actually, I said penetrating oil, but penetrating oil is probably not a good thing to use on that because it will tend to wash the grease away. And then the penetrating oil kind of dries up and, and evaporates. So you want to use something a little heavier on there. A spray grease would be good. Uh, we use a product called Fluid Film, which is a lanolin-based, so very light spray grease, but that's... Uh, it, it has excellent moisture repellent qualities, and it's very good lubricant, and it's uh, made from lanolin, which is a product of sheep's wool. So now, at the, when you're done with your snowblower and you want to take everything apart, probably the easiest way to do it is just remove this one nut on the bottom of this eyelet and take the whole arm off with the snowblower. That way you can just leave this clamp on there for the rest of the year. If the clamp bothers you, you can obviously loosen it up and take it off. But you know, if you're going to be putting the snowblower on and off, it's nice to have that clamp on there, and then you just take the one nut on and off. And that's about it. Enjoy your machine.